I like my, my I like my headphones like quite loud. And I'm on the same channel as you, so I'm gonna get kind of loud still. Okay. Oh. That's right, y'all back up in the side box on the DJ Claude. If I do not take care for yet another Saturday night, this is your boy All of America, and you are tuned in to the Urban Hang Suite, of course. And uh, yeah, for the last hour, I haven't really been saying much. It's been uh, having some offline dialogue, uh, courtesy of Touch, uh, also known as Dirty Needles, as well, to uh, chilling out with a man and the U.S. just talking about a variety of things here. But uh, now we're on air, so we're going to be talking about. Uh, an initiative and a campaign that we actually have uh, going on. But, but for those who may not be familiar with who you are, you are a hip hop artist who originally is from Alberta, but then you moved out to uh, the Maritimes. You were chilling out there with, with all the the uh, people that we like to call Newfies, but uh, you guys are a different <laughs> group of people, whether yeah. it be Moncton, whether it be. Uh, uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia. Cape Breton, you know. Props up to the Annapolis Valley, Kings County, uh, way back in the woods. Definitely, definitely. But now you're out here in Edmonton and uh, you've been out here for a while doing some music stuff. And uh, yes. you also work with, with uh, at-risk youth as well, too. Yes, I, uh, I recently finished up um, a position working with the Old Strathcona Youth Society. I, uh, oh, just a little, little closer to the mic there. Sure. Yeah. I worked a lot of one-on-one -on -one with uh, city youth, uh, youth that are considered high-risk. So again, that's not priority youth or youth that are at risk. These are youth that are already in that place and state of life where where the risk is very high. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. Crazy, crazy. And, and you uh, work with these kids, but at the same time, though, uh, to my to my understanding, you also use hip-hop as, as a way to actually connect with these kids and also teaching them as an outlet. Absolutely, absolutely. It kind of freaks people out because then, you know, they'll hear about ambiguous ambiguous is here and he's working with these kids so then you get this whole flow of new street kids come coming in to see me and, and you know it starts to freak out the other staff or whatever but then they see how how these gangster looking these, these gangster looking kids are coming in yeah. and now you know and then now they're writing rhymes about how they feel and their emotions and they're writing about their kids that they don't see or they're writing about how fathers don't got rights or they're yeah. writing about or they're writing about you know all kinds of stuff, right? You know, the community don't see them, and, and it's like, wow, you got, blows your mind. You that's know? crazy stuff, that's crazy stuff. And uh, do you ever take some of these stories and try to uh, incorporate them into your music in the sense of telling their stories? I don't, I don't, um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I recently, I recently got some mail from my haters talking about me exploiting youth for my own, for my own purposes. Um, the thing is, the last album, the, the first and only album I've ever released on my EP, It's a Cold Night, was wrote before I even started working with them. Yeah. I, I've been involved, you know, myself as a youth was, was at risk, you know, I, I, was, I was arrested by the police. I had a SWAT team come in and, and, and arrest me for trouble I had gotten in, you know, I had been involved with drugs. Yeah. I had witnessed abuse. I, you know, I've, been, I've lived in foster homes, been in the system. Yeah. You know, so so no. Uh, does it influence? Yes. Their stories definitely influence a lot of perception. And again, you know, as you were talking before, certain expectations I may have or believe I have, and yeah. I definitely learn and grow from everybody I meet and talk to. Right? I, tr I try to anyway. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, I just find it that that uh, there's so much to be that we can learn from kids in the sense that there is that that age of innocence that they go through, and even as they they slowly. Uh, grow out of that age of innocence. They're they're at such an impressionable age that that, that you get to see that, that that fight between what you know is is right and what you know is wrong, but at the same time still trying to define who you are. So and then and a lot of youth don't know because again they don't know what the expectations are supposed to be. They've had so many misinformed expectations placed on them. You know, yeah. without line, without without guidance. You know, and and, and it's, it's a lot of youth, right? You know, the the brain chemistry it is is still for you know the brains are still forming and growing yeah. and and there's so much it's very pronounced that a lot of youth need to seek that certain identity. You know, they're they're seeking identity. They're looking for that encouragement. So when they have an opportunity to express who they believe they are and are at that point in time, and they realize that it's okay to grow and change. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to love you congruently, yeah. good and your bad. You know, well then then they become more confident and then they can grow. 
Um, so yeah, you know, like you like you just said, you know, I think that self growth and, and identity is something that I think okay. we we still always search for to some degree. Now, when you look at uh, some of the the rules and or I should say legislation that's in place in <laughs> that for dealing with it with uh, yes. young kids who are who are getting involved with a lot of uh, bad things, do you think that the do you think the laws are, are are fair in regards to them, or do you think that they could be a little bit uh, policy needs to be changed straight yeah. up? I did a, uh, what was it, last summer, I did a protest with a friend of mine, Brittany White, did a protest down, j actually just after the Bosco youth killings. Oh. I was in no way um, condoning what happened, however, it was, it was a lot of the communication was about policy, yeah. you know, and policy and, and how community is dealing with the youth, and not just dealing, let's go take it back a little bit more, how we are understanding these youth. Again, I'll go back a little further and be like, you know, you judging the book by its cover. So the guy's the guy's wearing baggy pants and he curses a lot. Well, you know, shh, we're teaching him to keep it real. He thinks he's keeping it real. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't have he doesn't you know, you, you come to find out when you when you're able to teach somebody that's willing to learn that, you know, you can grow. It's okay. If you're gonna hang out with your friends and you wanna curse, yeah, it's okay. But you know, if you want to succeed with getting a job, maybe you should you know, not curse, or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, no, so, so policy, the way that we're, we're understanding it, it all has to change. We need to understand um, first, I think, the issues, and we need to really look at and push the change for certain policies. Yeah. Well, um, 